All right? How we feeling? Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time. Ready? How we feeling? I love it. Okay, we are going to begin with a blessing. So I'm going to have our chaplain, Chaplain Kate, start us off. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm glad to hear everybody's so excited. We could not have ordered better weather for you. I know it is warm, but this is awfully, it's an awful lot less humid than it normally is. So when the leadership of Decatur Presbyterian Church gathered and decided to open a school for women in the Reconstruction South, they chose not only to do so, do a new thing, but not to be afraid of the ramifications of their decision. So throughout our history, Scotties have waded headlong into times and spaces where others might fear to tread. Some things don't change. So I invite you to join with me in prayer. Creator of the stars of night, we enter this day with a certain amount of fear and trembling. We're anxious about making new friends, finding our way around a new campus, being separated from what we know and love. But we also enter this day with excitement of all that is to come, of new friends to meet, new things to see and to learn, and the freedom that comes from being with being away at college. Remind us that fear is a parasite that feeds on itself and help us to remember that love casts out fear that the love of those in this room and across this campus and those far away, they help us wade into fearful moments until we realize that we can float and swim beyond our own, buoyed by love. We choose each day to live into hope of peace and justice to come and the strength to work for it. Help us to remember that the arc of the universe bends ever towards justice and that one day we will see that come to be. Until that day comes, we live by your grace. Amen. It's now my distinct pleasure to invite someone almost as new as you, our brand new president, Lee Zach. Thank you very much, Chaplain Kate, for that beautiful blessing and introduction. Well, I have to tell you, it's really wonderful to look out and see so many familiar faces. Now, some of you are saying, wait a minute, I'm new here. How can she be seeing familiar faces? Well, hang on. Do you guys recognize this? <laughs> so I was that person pulling the cart and grabbing the bag and saying hello during lunch. Yep, it was me. <laughs> so I am delighted to see so many familiar faces from this morning and also new faces that I didn't have a chance to meet, but I look forward to meeting over the course of the coming days. This really is an amazing day. It is one of the absolute favorite days on this campus. And I have to tell you, as Chaplain Kate mentioned, I am new. I arrived only about six weeks and maybe seven weeks ahead of you. But I have been counting the days until the, your arrival. Everyone around this campus has been buzz. They've been working. They've been painting. They've been cleaning. They've been getting ready for all of you to come. So we want to start by saying a very warm but very loud welcome to the Red Class of 2022. Can the class stand? You are absolutely awesome. And along with our transfer students, our international exchange students, and Woodrow, Woodruff scholars, we are absolutely delighted to have one of the largest entering classes in our history. You're over 300 strong. And I mean strong. You are outstanding. 
You hail from 28 states, and I met people today from Washington State and California and New Mexico and, and New York City and Virginia and many beyond that, and of course, Georgia. <laughs> In entering the class, many of you had mentioned, 95% of you mentioned that Summit was important to your decision coming here. I have to tell you, Summit was important to my decision coming here as well. So I look forward to our journey together. Also, people mentioned the importance of sustainability. And that's something else that our campus is extremely proud of. You probably saw as you walked around today sort of many of the aspects of sustainability, but some of the things you may not have seen, but you may have walked over, uh, were our phenomenal geothermal fields that are powering several of our buildings on campus, the great responsibility that our community takes, and we're delighted that the campus was just named a gold campus for STARS. So again, if we could give the campus a round of applause, that is just awesome. And we're thrilled also to have with us our Posse Scholars and from Chicago. Posse Scholars, can you stand up? And I was delighted just this week to have an opportunity to chat with Deborah Beal, who was the founder of Posse, who is absolutely amazing and is so proud of all of you, and frankly, proud of this entire community for hosting Posse. So we're thrilled to have you here with us. And each one of you has committed to coming to Agnes Scott and committed to our mission. And tomorrow we'll also be signing our honor pledge tomorrow, together. But you've committed to think deeply, live honorably, and engage the intellectual and social challenges of our times. That's what leadership is about. That's what Agnes Scott has always been about. That's what you are about. And I look forward to watching you grow in that mission. I look forward to you developing as leaders throughout your time here, but also with the amazing things that the graduates of Agnes Scott have done, I look forward to watching you not only as you arrive today, but where you will be in the future because I know that it's going to be absolutely awesome, just like the rest of our Scotties. And to get there is a journey, but there are people here who are waiting to help you with that journey. First of all, we have an absolutely amazing faculty and staff, many who are represented here on the stage, and many of whom, again, you may have seen in their t-shirts, you might not have recognized. I saw several faculty members riding carts and driving carts and pushing bins. Also, an amazing staff that really cares and takes the opportunity to say hello to our students, to make sure that they have a good meal, to make sure that they get to where they need to be safely. We recognize this is your home away from home, and we are your family. And that includes the entire community. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. Feel free to talk to people. Feel free to engage with your professors. I can tell you, I met with many of them over the summertime. They also couldn't wait till you arrive. They are so excited that you're here, um, that you're here in numbers, but they also take such pride in every one of their students and follow them not only through their career and support them here at Agnes Scott, but they have told me amazing stories about what their students have done after they've journeyed on beyond Agnes Scott. So it's that tremendous pride. And as Chaplain Kate mentioned this morning, transition can be difficult. It can be a little strange but it also could be absolutely amazing. I am so grateful to this community for the unbelievable welcome that they have shown to me. And I know that they want to show that welcome to you as well. I also say, I also saw that you have an amazing support network in your fellow students. One, clearly you have peers who are going through exactly the same thing. 
You are not the only ones who are thinking about what's coming next, how do I get to my class, how do I find that building. I have to tell you, I walk the campus every night, I'm still memorizing the buildings um, as I go around. But your peers are having some of those same concerns as well. Feel free to talk to them. I have to say, there is an amazing group of Scotties here. Yesterday, I was in the dining hall and talking to a couple of the students, a couple of RAs, a couple of people planning for orientation, people who are peer advisors. And they were talking about how excited they are that you're coming. They were planning fun opportunities for you to be able to get to know each other. They were talking about how they can help with respect to the future and planning through their summit peer advisors. So your upper class students also are so excited you're here and they're ready to help. And I have to say, I was just so impressed with the unbelievable maturity and warmth and the amount of planning that they were doing, waiting for you all to come. So we are very excited and we are definitely ready. And we want the families, the parents, the, the grandparents, sisters, brothers, all of you, aunts and uncles, to know this is a community. This is a community that reaches out. It's one that cares. We have an amazing group here who is willing to support the people who are here and join us. It's also a phenomenal place to learn that you can do anything you want. You can learn whatever you want. Liberal arts education frees the mind. It makes you a leader. It makes you think. It makes you the best you you can be. And I know you are going to be absolutely awesome. Thank you very much. And it is now my pleasure to introduce our Vice President of Academic Affairs, Carrie Pinnell. Carrie? Thank you so much, President Zach, and welcome everyone. Um, all of Academic Affairs is very excited that you're here. If you think about the staff who helped you move in this morning, they might have been from the library. They might have been part of our information technology services. They might have been from any number of offices on campus that are here to support and help you. There are about 3,500 colleges and universities in the United States and 228 of those are liberal arts colleges. And you, the new students at Agnes Scott, and your families have selected Agnes Scott, the most dynamic community of scholars, leaders, artists that you'll find anywhere. You are now entering this community of scholars, and the faculty and staff here are eager to assist you on your path to becoming the person that you want to be. At this moment, you are embarking on your leadership journey and developing your legacy. Scotties are leading everywhere, and soon you will be too. You learn so much from your faculty and being in the classroom, but in fact, you learn so much from each other outside the classroom. Summit is about learning everywhere. Think of all the, the amazing Scotties that have come before you. In such a diverse community of scholars, you will learn as much from each other as you do from your faculty. Just among your summit peer advisors and orientation council leaders, there are students from all backgrounds, all geographical regions, and around the world. Their majors range from biology and classics to political science and studio art. Some of them are formidable athletes, some are talented musicians, and others are inspiring creative writers. They all represent Agnes Scott students who are ready to learn from you and are ready and willing and eager to show you the ropes as you begin your college career. Our summit initiative includes a leadership skills course where you will develop your talents of teamwork, writing, public speaking, critical thinking, digital and information literacy. These are things that you need to succeed in all vocations in all courses of study, in graduate school, and in all careers. 
Many of the jobs of the 21st century haven't even been created yet, and you are the future leaders who will create those jobs. You know, I mentioned earlier, Agnes Scott is a liberal arts college. What exactly does that mean? Well, it has the word art in it. In it. Uh, does that mean we all become artists? Uh, not necessarily. Certainly, you can develop yourself as an artist, a performer, a dancer, writer, actor, singer, musician. Scotties do all of these things. Uh, and you've told us that many of you are interested in those pursuits as well. We have expert faculty in each of these areas to guide you. But liberal arts is not limited to the arts. The term liberal arts also has the term liberal in it. Does that mean we are all liberal? No, not necessarily. Many Scotties are politically progressive, while others are conservative. So that's what makes the debates in your political science classroom exciting. It would be a very boring world if everybody thought the same thing. We wouldn't thrive, we wouldn't grow as scholars and leaders without these diverse perspectives. The term liberal in liberal arts actually comes from an idea about education that originated in ancient Greece more than 2,000 years ago. In Greek antiquity, a liberal was someone who was free to participate in public life, a citizen who was ready and able to make ethical decisions in a system of direct democracy. These skills were essential for ancient Athenians to debate whether to raise taxes, whether to develop new infrastructure, whether to sign a treaty or go to war. Of course, all of those Greek citizens were men. We have come a long, long way since then, and we know that women's colleges train leaders in the kind of learning environment that encourages excellence for all of its students. And Summit will provide you with the expertise in global learning and leadership that will transform the way you view the world and what you believe you are capable of. Starting with the Goizueta Foundation Leadership Immersion, or legacy as we like to call it, you'll learn about yourself and your strengths along with ideas about leadership development. We use the term reflection a lot, uh, but what that means, it's not about a, a, a narcissistic view of yourself. It really involves about thinking yourself, about yourself, identifying your personal qualities and values that you will bring to any situation. You develop and enhance and expand those skills that allow you to collaborate successfully. This is why teamwork is so important. Then you broaden the perspective one step further and address changes um, that we need to um, perhaps take place in society. Using this approach, you'll begin to see where your values and skills, your hard work in creating a high-functioning team will create you as a leader that can change your community and society. So liberal arts is a curriculum, is a gift of uh, wisdom from the ages, and it's also the best way to develop your talents to make positive change in the world. At Agnes Scott, we revel in our interdisciplinarity. We bring disciplines together and use whichever approach will help us understand how to solve problems that don't confine themselves to a single discipline. Your faculty in the chemistry department, for example, will be thrilled when you relate your course material to what you're studying in math or in public health classes. If you study environmental sustainability, you will be using knowledge you can bring from philosophy, from politics to biology. All of this knowledge can be brought to bear on the environmental challenges of our times. As a student at Agnes Scott, you will begin to understand the highs and lows of the human condition locally and globally. We empower you to challenge the status quo, and we train you to make an evidence-based argument for change, whether it be political, social, or economic change. You will come to know the beauty of a work of art, how it connects people through time and across cultures, and the emotional impact that it generates. Connect all of these hard-won skills, knowledge, and impact, and you have a Scotty who is ready to take on anything and everything. Someone who envisions a world of fairness and inclusivity and has the problem solving and communication skills to move society toward that vision. That's what it means when we say Agnes Scott students are leading everywhere. And that's why our mission is to educate students to think deeply, live honorably, and engage the intellectual and social challenges of our times. It is my great pleasure now to introduce Professor Tracy Laird. She is professor of music and also the president of the faculty.
Hello. So as a representative of the faculty here at Agnes Scott, I come to you with words of welcome, with some observations and predictions, and with some advice. So the welcome is pretty straightforward. Welcome, newest Scotties. There's a bit of a milestone here for me because last year I completed my 18th year on the faculty of Agnes Scott. And I think this is probably the first year where I might have been teaching here as long as many of you were alive. <laughs> it's a little um, mixed, but I, I tell you there's a reason that I've been hanging around as long as I have. Um, I observe you here at a moment, you're poised at a moment of transition in your lives. You're about to embark on new experiences, new friendships, new thoughts, worries, challenges. So many aspects of your daily experience are in flux as you move from what was to what will be. But at the center of all of these different complex elements of your college years will be the classroom. The interactions you'll have with fellow students, with professors, over readings and films and music and art and laboratory experiments and mathematical equations. You will wrestle with ideas through writing, speaking, research, sketching, outlining, brainstorming, rewriting, workshopping, editing, writing some more, discussing, and so on. You will take on challenges, set up a research project, perform a musical work, create a pen and ink drawing, craft a compelling presentation, test a hypothesis through experimentation, draft a persuasive argument, sharpen your athletic abilities, take part in a professional environment through an internship, travel to a place you've never been. I actually came to you from a workshop with other faculty, all of us who are preparing for the journeys classes in the spring. Um, and I'm actually going to slip out right after I finish my greeting to you to go back and join them. So um, we're thinking about you guys all the time. My advice as you begin all of this is threefold. And I want to lay it out and then elaborate. So go all in. Work hard when you work and play hard when you play. And pursue what you love. So let me, uh, let me flesh out what I, what I mean by those so we visit them. Go all in. Whatever is set out before you, do the very best job you can do. That's how you build skills that will prepare you for whatever comes next in life. The gusto-driven effort that brings you up to and just beyond your own perceived limits, those are the ones that propel you forward to the next challenge and renew your energy to meet that challenge. Work hard when you work and play hard when you play. I think focus is a challenge for all of us. And for many students, entering college is the first time you've been put in control of your own schedule. Showing up for that team meeting for your presentation, starting that paper, it all has to do with locating that inner sense of motivation inside of you, that internal energy, because no one's gonna make you do it. There's an element of balance here, I think, that gets even more challenging in an environment, thanks to our phones and other devices, of constant potential distraction. There's actually, the most recent article in uh, edition of National Geographic magazine has a whole bunch about sleep and, you know, the, the scientific basis for needing it and um, the blue lights and the stuff you already know. But what I urge you to do is plan times to concentrate and give yourself the grace and the space to do so by shutting out the dings, the pings, the vibrations that otherwise won't stop tugging at you. Now parents, I'm a parent of a college age student and I, I, this is an aside, they, all, they need to include times when they can shut out pings and dings from us. It's hard, but it's true. Likewise though, I think you should plan times to relax, unwind, hang out, and give yourself over fully just as you, to fun, just as you have to your labors. The in-between times, I think, are less satisfying both ways. Finally, I want to I want to say pursue what you love. Now, people say this, right? You hear this. It's tempting to dismiss this advice as impractical in the so-called real world. But I 
think it's really impractical to sustain an effort for 30 or 40 years doing something you don't really like to do. Your generation is anticipated, and this overlaps with some of the observations of my uh, previous colleagues, you're anticipated to have more varied work and, and work and career experiences than anybody before you, and in some cases to make up new ones. So your Ag Agnes Scott education prepares you with those written, oral, digital research skills, but also with the intellectual flexibility to put those to work in a variety of contexts. Because of that, with a few exceptions, it really matters very little what your actual major is. Now, as a music professor, I recognize that not every discipline is as practical as music. <laughs> I'm glad. Think about it, though. We in music formally train students to develop intellectual and analytical capacity, artistic and creative thinking, and we teach them practical applications like identifying a goal or project, preparing for it, and executing it. And you know what? We have music majors who go on to pursue music after Agnes, but at the same time, we have music majors who go on to med school or law school or who otherwise enter the workforce as capable, self-starting, resourceful people. And that will describe you on the other side of your Agnes Scott education, no matter what your final choice of major. I want to say one final word. There will be times when you doubt you can do this. Maybe even times when you doubt that you want to do this. But if you look around you now, there are people you already know you can lean on. And there are people you have yet to meet who will become sources of strength. There are people like me and my fellow faculty members, along with staff at every part of campus, all here to support you on your way. And on the other side of the joys and doubts of your college journey comes the satisfaction of finding out more about who you are, what you are capable of, and who you will become. So welcome to this moment, this pivot point, this cusp of your life's next new chapter. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to turn over the podium to our Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students, Karen Goff. Well, yeah, you. I like this kind of energy. Oh my goodness, you have been welcomed and you are here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you do feel welcome. Do you feel welcome? Okay. It is certainly a delight and really an honor to be able to stand before you and to uh, just offer you some uh, words of encouragement. I recognize um, as the Dean of Students uh, over the years, having met with uh, families and new students, you are going through an array of emotions. You know, I met some parents, they were crying in the parking lot. I was like, it's gonna be okay, can we get some Scotty tissues? I met some, you know, I met one grandfather, and he may be here, had on his polo, it says, oh miss. Oh, hello grandfather, hi grandpa, hope you're there. And you know, I kindly got him a nice, Scotty Athletics polo <laughs> for Agnes Scott. Some of you are excited. You're nervous. You're anxious. The parents, actually I think, let me talk with the parents first because I think for the most part parents and families and your support network and your friends, you're probably having a harder time. You know, I've had to call public safety to escort people off campuses. <laughs> or mothers trying to sneak back into the residence halls. And so we recognize and we acknowledge it is difficult. You know, when you think for much of their uh, young adulthood years and everything that you've done and you've been there and you've been high school and they come home every evening and you get to see them and you know exactly what they're doing. And so you, you are uh, rightfully so anxious about the next chapter.
Whether it was uh, Scholars Weekend or uh, doing Achievement Weekend, I've been uh, stalking some of you on Instagram, you know, Journey to Scotties and all of these wonderful things. I saw one car decorated and the dog and everything else, and I'm, I was really loving this. I could not wait to meet you in person, and you've heard a lot of that. But now I say to the students that you're here now, and I think Tracy says it best, go all in. And I want to just offer you some of the wisest, most ancient kind of wisdom. And I wish somebody would have told me about, you know, that Plato and Aristotle would have informed you of these deep philosophical thoughts. I like to go deep. Here at Agnes, we're about thinking deeply. And so here we go. I am going to guarantee your success if you just do three things. You don't have to take notes, but I do need them to be etched in your memory. Parents, you can listen to because you can be co-collaborators. The first profound thought is, go to class. <laughs> Who would have thought? your scholars. You really have performed well academically for you to be here at Athens Scott. But for much of your lives, you have been what we call dependent learners. You know, think about it. You're home, if the alarm clock goes off, and you haven't gotten, you know, out the door, you have mom or dad or grandma or auntie or whomever saying, okay, it's time to go. Some of you drive, some of you are catching the bus. You probably get up somewhere around six, seven. You have to be uh, you know, at school around 8.30 or so, or so for some of you, 7.30. And somehow when you get to college, I don't know what happens, eight o'clock just seems really hard. <laughs> it just seems really hard to get up and go to class. But it's more than going in class. It really is about immersing yourself it is about showing up 100%, being all in, participating, engaging, challenging. We talk here about, as part of our mission, engaging in the intellectual and the social challenges of our time. And boy, are we in precarious times. And so we want you to stretch yourselves. We want you to ask critical questions. We want you to challenge the status quo. That's what Scotties do. So go to class. Great, right? Plato would have been so pleased. <laughs> Number two, if you want to have a really successful and dynamic college experience, get involved. Look at that. Get involved. And when I say get involved, many of you are sitting here, you're scholars, get involved in your academic clubs. We have chemistry club, math club, psychology clubs. Then we have the programming board. <laughs> wonderful orientation leaders, some of them. And we have catalyst programs and all kinds of leadership, resident assistants, uh, athletes, everything. Get involved in the life of the college so that you can feel and you can get the best experience. So that long after you have left and you've graduated, you'll be able to talk about those memories. Whenever you talk to people about their college experience, much of the time they talk about the people. They talk about the people who made an impact. They talk about meeting their best friends at the time. They talk about some of the challenge they experienced with that first roommate. I had some of those. <laughs> you know, because when you're filling out those forms, instead of you doing it, mom or dad is doing it. And so they put on the, you know, the residential form that you are neat and clean. <laughs> that you need a nice, neat, and clean roommate to match you, and then suddenly something happened. And then I talked to the parents and I said, we just went with what was on the form. And they said, oh, they didn't fill it out, I did. I said, okay. So get, get involved as much as possible as you can, and pace and balance yourself. Last but not least, the third G. So the first one is what? All right, okay, we're not gonna ask the orientation leaders who've been here to answer, so now I need the new Scottis. What is the first G? Go to class. What is the second? Get involved. Okay, 
And the third one is gather some good friends. Good friends. <laughs> you know, friendship really is very valuable as you go through life's journey. When you get these good friends, these are some of the people that you're going to be talking with. These are the people you're going to be hanging out with. They are going to hold you accountable. You are going to hold them accountable. They are going to want to see you succeed. If you get with a group and they're telling you to skip class and do other things, then you know you need to get some new friends. Remember, I didn't say just get friends, some good ones. Get some good friends. And so I assure you, if you do these three things, I can almost guarantee success. Because with going to class, chances are you'll get some good grades. Get involved, you will feel a real sense of belonging. You will begin to build your network. You will begin to feel connected to the people around you. And finally, you get some good friends. And then you know that just like Posse came, and they came with a Posse. Right? They have already been plugged in and they will get to meet other posses. We call them Posse Plus. So you all need to develop your own posses and your own network and your own friendships. And I guarantee success. Again, I am so excited and I am so delighted to have you here. I look forward to meeting and connecting with as many of you as possible throughout the campus. And so welcome and I hope you do feel welcome and enjoy the rest of the day. to Agnes Scott College. I promise, I'm the last speaker. Um, but my name is Carissa Tedesco, and I serve, as the, I serve as the Assistant Dean for Student Development. Um, thank you, OLs. I love your energy. Um, <laughs> so what I want to ask first is, did everyone enjoy lunch? Okay, how are those food trucks? It's good. Okay, are we all full? Good. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let me uh, begin by saying that it is an honor to be with you and to share in this journey with you over the course of the next three days. I know that you have so many emotions and so many thoughts that are running through your mind. You're excited, maybe even a little nervous, but I assure you at this very moment, you made the right decision. You are sitting in the right place. Yeah. You're about to embark on an amazing journey and our faculty and our staff will be with you every step of the way to guide you and to support you and to provide you with endless opportunities. So at this very moment, I don't know if we've celebrated it enough, but you have made history. You are officially the largest class to be accepted into Agnes Scott College. You should be very proud of yourselves. I want to take a moment right now and I want to ask all of our new Scotties, our new students, who serve as first generation students, the first to attend college in their families, I want you to stand and be recognized right now. This is an accomplishment and we are so proud of you. I now want to take some time to direct our attention to the students with purple t-shirts in the aisles, if you could please stand. <laughs> they have been working hard all summer to make sure that your orientation experience is an unforgettable one. So please join me in giving them a round of applause, our orientation leaders. Yeah. 
Remember their faces. They will be with you every step of the way as well. And they have on their buttons their names. So make sure you get to know them. And no, new Scotties, I'm watching you. I'm recruiting for next year. This could be you. You can be seated. Thank you. <laughs> so again, if at any time you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to ask one of our orientation leaders. I want to go over a few items with you before I start to dismiss the groups. Um, all of our students, our new Scotties, right? You should have the guidebook app downloaded. Our entire orientation schedule for new students is now on the phone. Um, this will lead you through orientation and legacy. And parents and families, you can use the app as well. Uh, there's a different track for students and there's a different track for parents and guests. Uh, we will also have hard copies of the schedule at our information desk that's located in the Alston Campus Center. So if you have any questions regarding the app, I want you to feel comfortable to ask orientation leaders, staff, and faculty because they will be able to assist you as well. Over the next course of the two days that we'll have orientation, there's going to be a few sessions where both parents, families, and students will be required to attend. And that's one session today, which is what every Scotty should know about conduct in Title IX. Tomorrow we will have the honor pledge ceremony, and then tomorrow we will also have a panel known as Faces of Agnes. During those sessions, live streaming will be available on other locations on campus to make sure that everybody is comfortable. And so those locations will be in the hub, which is located in the Austin Campus Center, and in Campbell 128, which is in our Campbell building. And our orientation leaders will be able to take you there and lead you there and stay with you. New students, you will be receiving your red t-shirts in the next session today. Those are your red orientation t-shirts. Please, please, please to make sure to wear them tomorrow so we can identify who our new students are. And last but not least, I want you to know that this is supposed to be one of the best moments of your life. So feel free to capture it. Uh, we want to make sure that you're using the hashtags. And so we have two hashtags, and that is hashtag ASC22, or you can use hashtag ScottyHood2022. There's also a Snapchat filter just for the class of 2022. So please enjoy using all of those marketing um, forms of communication and forms of uh, showing off your experience here at orientation. So I'm now going to conclude our welcome and I'm going to dismiss all of our groups. I want you to remember one thing. I want you to have fun and I want you to know that you are now officially a part of the Agnes Scott family. Woo!